name's Leslie Mackey from Macrina Bakery and Cafe. Welcome to Vashon Island. We're going to work on two recipes today. We're going to do an artisan bread loaf and also a whole grain artisan loaf. This recipe was recently published in a cookbook of mine called More from Macrina. I really felt like it needed just a little bit more explanation, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share this recipe with you. With the artisan loaf, I start with 3 quarters cup milk and 3 quarters cup warm water. Into that I dissolve 2 teaspoons of dried yeast and I put in 2 tablespoons of olive oil. I mix that up, dissolve the yeast and let that sit for about 2-3 minutes. And then I measure the flour. I really like using Bob's Red Mill. There's about 11 and a half ounces of that, 2 ounces of coarse rye, and then a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt. I mix the batter for about, oh, two, three minutes, and then that gets covered and rests or proofs for about two hours. We want it to about double in size. Then we're going to do a baker's turn on this. A baker's turn is when you're detaching the edges of the dough in the bowl, and then you're stretching it in four different directions, and then inverting it. If the dough is super slack, then I would suggest doing two baker's turns at that time. And then we want to cover it up with plastic wrap. And just as a reminder for myself, I always write the variety of loaf that I've made and I always put a time of which I've finished that turn because I know I, have, I need two hours for the next turn. So in this loaf, you're gonna do three baker's turns of which you're going to have a two hour rest between those. On the last turn, you're actually going to only let it rest for about an hour and then you're going to bake it shortly after that. So the whole grain artisan loaf is just a little bit different. We start with one cup three quarters of warm water, two teaspoons of dried yeast and two tablespoons of honey. So you could use agave syrup, you could use molasses, you just want a little bit of sweetener to help with the caramelization of this loaf. You're going to mix that up, dissolve the yeast, and let it sit for two or three minutes. The flours in this loaf, we're going to use rye, two ounces. We're going to use some whole wheat flour, about four and a half ounces, and then about five and a half ounces of all-purpose organic white flour. So this is your opportunity to use different local grains. You can mix and match, just kind of keep those proportions similar. The final dried ingredient is kosher salt, so we'll put about one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. I like to mix the dry ingredients up first before introducing it into the liquids of this dough. And I just use a spatula or a wooden spoon to mix this. And what you'll notice in this particular dough, when you're working with whole grain flours, they tend to absorb slowly over time. So this dough is going to be wetter than the artisan loaf. Now I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and let it proof or rest at room temperature for about two hours. At that point it'll about double in size. I also wanted to add in some seeds. I put a half a cup of pumpkin seeds and a half a cup of sunflower seeds and then a half a cup of diced organic apricots. And when you're putting additional kind of garnish into the loaf, you have to hydrate it, so you have to soak it. So I soaked it in a full cup of warm water and let it sit for about, you know, two hours. So with this dough, we're gonna do three baker's turns. The first one is the initial proofing. At the second turn, we're going to introduce the hydrated seeds and the apricots. So if you're ever adding anything into the dough, this is the best time to add it in. This particular dough, because it is very wet, and also because you're introducing these um, soaked seeds, will probably need two baker's turns at this time. The third baker's turn is actually done on a floured work surface. I invert it and then I round it to tighten the tension of the loaf. The plastic wrap that I've used to cover the loaf in the proofing process, I will drape inside a smaller bowl, or just with a fair amount of flour, and then I will cover the excess of the plastic wrap over the top of the loaf. And I like to bake this loaf a little bit under proof, so we're only proofing it for an hour. What we're baking this artisan loaf in is a double dutch oven. 
So Lodge makes one. I found mine at an old antique store many years ago. It's really important to preheat your oven to 450 and also preheat your Dutch oven. By trapping the loaf in the inverted cast iron pan, it traps all the steam which kind of works like steam in an oven uh, when you're baking in a professional oven. And it really creates the best exterior crust. So it's really important to work quickly when you're getting ready to invert this loaf onto the lid of the preheated Dutch oven. So you want to gently invert it and then with a sharp knife you score the top of the loaf. Once you've inverted the cast iron pot onto the lid, you want to quickly put it back in the oven. You'll be baking in low for 30 minutes at 450 degrees. So after 30 minutes of baking, you want to remove the top pot from the uh, Dutch oven. Then the loaf will continue to caramelize and you'll get that deep golden brown color. So when you've reached the desired color that you're looking for, you want to take it out of the oven and then put it onto a rack to cool. From the two loaves we made today, I chose the artisan loaf to make a simple open face sandwich. So I spread a little bit of pesto, topped it with some black forest ham, layer of cambozilla cheese, some roasted pears, and then I dabbled a tiny bit of apple cider balsamic vinegar and then a little bit of alapo peppers. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how to make our artisan bread. It does require being home most of the day, but the results are great. My goal is to inspire confidence in those of you who fear making bread at home. To get more information about the recipe, check out our blog at macrinabakery.com.